Despite their controversial nature, nuclear power plants could save our climate. You may find it astonishing, but some experts argue that nuclear energy has the potential to reduce CO2 emissions by 2.5 billion tonnes every year. Nuclear power is green power. At least that is what the nuclear industry and the British government are telling us. We're going nuclear for a number of reasons. One, principally of course, is because of climate change and our need to increase our CO2 free electricity generating capacity. The UK's old reactors are due to be gradually decommissioned over the next 15 years. In order for nuclear energy to have any impact on reducing carbon emissions, 10 new reactors would have to be built. Nathan Argent, a Greenpeace activist, argues that this is a huge understatement. If the government kind of did manage to deliver on an ambitious programme of replacing the existing fleet of 10 reactors, we'd actually only reduce our CO2 emissions by about 3.6%. I mean, if we were serious about meeting our climate change targets and reducing CO2 globally, we'd need to be building four nuclear power stations every month for the next 75 years. It's simply not possible. In the quiet village of Sizewell, 93 miles northeast of London, there are plans to build a new nuclear power station in 2018. Sizewell A closed down one and a half years ago, and Sizewell B is expected to provide electricity until 2035. Although the power plants create jobs in the region, many of the village's residents are not happy about plans to build a third reactor on the site. Opposition has been rallied by a citizens' initiative outside a briefing organised by the power station operator, British Energy. I think it's wrong to swap one pollutant of carbon dioxide with another, which is high level radioactive waste. I think that when you look at it on balance, uh, that's uh, only the logical thing to say. We shouldn't be talking just about climate change. We should be talking about sustainability. I'm against the legacy we're living for our grandchildren and their grandchildren for thousands of generations of grandchildren. But the majority of Britons support a renaissance of nuclear energy, including this former Sizewell employee. I worked in the nuclear industry for a long while and I can, I've seen how safe and how well run it is and uh, that just that we are needed. I mean, we can't keep burning fossil fuels forever. Um, we need to do something else. Uh, wind is one possibility, but that's not going to solve our problems. I think we need it as a country, is the problem but we really don't want it on our doorstep. But, so we're in favour of nuclear, but don't really want it here. After our visit to Sizewell, we drive to Sellafield. The reprocessing plant here is a legacy to Britain's radioactive history. However, it is far from environmentally friendly. Nuclear waste disposal is a subject the industry prefers not to talk about. No need for concern, says the Sellafield MP, Jameson Reid, who sat on the government's environmental committee for two years. I'm a third generation nuclear worker. Um, I'm the third generation of people in my family who work at the Sellafield facility. Um, I'm a father of three young children. If I thought there were any risks whatsoever, I would be the first politician in this country to campaign against the nuclear industry. I've spoken to scientists, the overwhelming weight of evidence is such that there isn't one shred of credible scientific evidence to suggest that there's any health effects caused by Sellafield or the nuclear industry at all. Now, it really does, I think, stretch the patience and the decency of ordinary people when these arguments, without one shred of scientific fact, are thrown up again and again and again. Near the plant, nuclear pollution is fairly substantial. The Geiger counter measures 300 becquerels of radiation, about as much found in the Chernobyl area today. Janine Ali-Smith is outraged by the way we are treating our environment. Tourists come here, they have no idea. Children come and kick a ball around. People take their dogs for a walk. And, uh, you know, they could breathe in particles, you could breathe in particles and there should at least be warnings. Even the sheep are radiating. Every day, 8 million litres of pollutant, often radioactive, flows into the sea. Discharges from Sellafield into the Irish Sea, which they said would go out into the Atlantic. It hasn't. It has settled just off the coast. 
it's blown back on land onto the beaches and every day the tide brings it in. The facilities of Sizewell lie on the Suffolk coast, directly on the beach. For the locals, it seems quite normal to live in an area where in the near future there may be three nuclear power plants. This is Britain's only pressurised water reactor. The cooling water is pumped out of the sea and pipes back there again. But does this not cause problems for fishermen working here? It's not risky at all. And I'm all for it, because it's clean. To me, it doesn't make no difference. Did you think about Chernobyl? Uh, no, I mean, that, that was an accident, wasn't it? I mean, accidents happen all around the world. You get the storms, the bad weather and everything like that. So, you know, one power station, if it, if it happened, to be honest with you, a lot of people wouldn't know about it, would you? Nuclear power plants are normally built at remote locations. Surely a sign that the industry should take the hazard potential of their technology seriously. Alan Miller works in this huge nature reserve, which borders the Sizewell reactor. He receives his salary from British Energy, the operator of the plant. The wetland in Sizewell is an area of scientific interest and is considered to be of a national importance. Not because of its proximity to the nuclear plant, but because it is Britain's largest bird sanctuary. Pure remit is to manage the wildlife. So, as I've said before, it doesn't matter if it's a chocolate factory or a nuclear power station. We would do what we do for the land around it and for the wildlife around it. Upon closer examination, nuclear energy is not as green as its proponents may claim. The issue of disposal is far from resolved. And what about the alternatives? Will increased investment in nuclear power inhibit the development of solar, wind and water resources? This is going to be the private sector investing in energy generating technologies. They can choose what they wish to invest in. We've put unprecedented sums, subsidies, into renewable uh, energy in the UK. I think that the argument that um, nuclear crowds out renewables just doesn't hold water. In fact, I think it's a desperate argument. But this Greenpeace animation puts those figures into perspective. Big bends. With the government spending £13 billion in research and development for the nuclear industry, add that to the £70 billion just to manage the current nuclear waste, and a mere £1 billion for research and development into renewables. Is it any wonder renewables haven't had the chance to reach their full potential? Nathan Argent isn't surprised, mainly because those who oppose new forms of energy are powerful, very powerful in fact. I think what the nuclear industry fears most is the fact that they're, they're frightened of losing their, their control. I mean, they, they own the distribution networks, they are the generators, and they desperately want to maintain that. Now, if we're serious about attacking climate change, we need to break down this antiquated, centralised energy system that we have. The one thing the nuclear industry does not want to see is this monopoly that they currently have, where they're making billions and billions of pounds broken up. That's simply why they've invested so much money in trying to develop this PR code to make sure that they've, got, they've been thrown a lifeline. And people in Britain? It would seem that they are bought into the nuclear industry's green image. Over half of the population supports resurgence of nuclear power.